to record our conversation. So um, you can continue. Nice, nice. Okay. Thing. So my name is Eamon Akhtar. Uh, my partner, Fa and I, we started Fungusaurs with the Kickstarter back in the end of 2016. Um, and we built our own uh, independent IP characters and uh, we did mystery box toys because we wanted to do collectible toys and we wanted to bring them to life with augmented reality. The mm -hmm. technology was still very early uh, in those days. Object recognition didn't work very well. So we kind of kept developing it. Uh, we raised 50K in seed funding in uh, 2019 and we built out our minimum viable product, which is our uh, Fungusaurus AR mobile game, which is now live on the App Store. Uh, and we got partners in Octagon Studio uh, that are for percentage of equity building out our game with us, uh, as well as just, you know, the best partners to work with so far in terms of experimenting with AR and pushing what we can do in that physical to digital space. Um, there's definitely a demand. I know when, uh, we show our toys uh, when kids pull up the app and they start playing, their eyes just light up and they start using their imagination in such a beautiful way. And that's what it's all about for us. It's unlocking the imaginative play for different you know, kids to express themselves. Um, so yeah, we uh, are now in the process of seeking seed funding to actually build out our IP, make an animated show and content, continue developing the AR, uh, game and toys pipeline so we can incorporate newer technology, take it over to Android phones, maybe incorporate multiplayer, just kind of, you know, new experiences and try to grow our fan base as we go. Amazing. Um, how did you initially come about the idea? So Fungusaurs uh, came about uh, at In-N-Out Burger. That's the birthplace of all the best <laughs> ideas <favorite>. in uh, <laughs> California. <laughs> uh, we were driving back from... <laughs> <laughs> we were we were driving back from Yosemite in the rainy season and I had picked up a mushroom hunting catalog because I was thinking let's see what's there you know if I can identify anything and we saw a bunch of mushrooms but I didn't identify anything my first time around uh, but on the way back we stopped in and out and they gave us some dinosaur stickers yeah. and I've been a dino nerd since always before Pokemon that's what we had to memorize so I just I knew so many of them and I had these two things sitting next to each other and I pulled out my sketchbook and I just started sketching lots of ideas, came back home and got on ZBrush and sculpted them out. And then I printed them out on my Formlabs 3D printers and then started painting them. And we had a whole prototype toy line, you know, within a few months. Mm -hmm. um, we showed it at a few different expos and shows here in California, the Designer Con Show, Monster Palooza. And they did really well. People kept saying they want the paint, they want, they want us to grow this thing. So next year we did the Kickstarter and uh, yeah, the rest is just in development since then. Wow, okay. And so why the, why the, why the, why did you decide to mix, mix dinosaurs and fungus mushrooms and what we, <laughs> what the, uh, So fungus just appeals to me from, you know, the perspective of form and shape at first, right? As a sculptor, that's what drew me to it. There's so many different fascinating varieties, colors, shapes, and then, you know, dinosaurs. I've, like I said, I've always been a dino nerd. So it kind of came organically uh, to create these cute, appealing characters for me. Um, I've been studying for a while for and developing content for you know companies like DreamWorks and Disney and Blizzard. So for me, you know, creating appealing characters is that highest form of entertainment because you're creating something that without words, uh, kids all over the world, basically four quadrant family entertainment, can latch onto and you know start triggering their imagination. So that to me was what got me started in it. Then as I started researching and started coming up with story and ideas there's just endless possibilities because there's so many different dinosaurs and fungi are actually way more interesting than I gave them credit for at first. Uh, they've been around for 3 billion years. They take up every facet of every ecosystem on our planet. Mm. They're responsible for um, cleaning up messes, uh, degrading and uh, taking nutrients from dead things and decomposing them so that new things can sprout life from them. Um, there's just so much that they do in our environment that I thought there's something here because I can create these characters 
And not only are they just cute and interesting, but they can have a purpose. They mm -hmm. can have stories. They can actually be um, eco characters. Uh, and that really is in line with what this next generation is all about because climate change is the biggest threat you know, to this next generation. Um, and so there's so many ideas cooking. We had a writer's room here where we brought in a lot of writers from DreamWorks and Netflix shows and the ideas just kept flowing. So um, yeah, we've got a lot in development. So hopefully one day we can uh, put it out there for everyone to see. So, and, and so you created the, cause, cause you're an animator and your background is content creation. You wanted to go and create your own licensed characters with its own kind of universe around yep. this AR experience. So you try to, you, you've tried to break the mold in every, you try to revolutionize in every area across the board with this AR application. I've not actually seen much animation that kind of meets this level of quality and storytelling that, that you guys have achieved. So did you do that with guys from Pixar? Is that, did you work with which studios? Who did, how did you develop that content, that universe? So the great thing about being in Los Angeles, because I was in Chicago for 15 years before this doing advertising and 3D art for uh, pharmaceutical and whatever really. Uh, but I moved down to Los Angeles about seven years ago to pursue entertainment. And since then, you just make a lot of friends in the industry. So my friends saw what I was trying to do and they wanted to help. It wasn't going to specific studios and putting a budget together and producing it. It was just, hey, so I'm sculpting and I'm going to create these models. Can you help me do some shading? Can you help me do some rigging? Can you help me do some animating? And we put it together very independently. So yeah, uh, we put it all together ourselves. And then uh, working with uh, our partners at Octagon Studios to program it and create the app with us, I, we even worked with some programmers over here to create kind of like a basic app to pitch it to get that initial seed funding. So it's all been a very, you know, hands-on learning experience, very independent effort so far. And um, with, with uh, I guess with, with the, with what were the challenges with the characters of trying to get the characters to work seamlessly with the physical world? Because it's really, uh, detailed animation so to bring that across and to make that uh align with with your physical environment how did you how did you get around those problems what, what were you faced with so so there was a couple of challenges with making fungusaurs ar and we're still in development so there's still a long way to go for it to be as awesome as i want it to be but the big challenges we faced were one object tracking so it took a while for the technology to catch up to where my vision was of being able to, without any uh, markers, without any uh, kind of RFID chips in the toys or anything like that, simply by, uh, you know, matching a silhouette to the actual toy, the toy comes alive. And that, you know, from any angle should work. So that we finally unlock using, uh, you know, software partnerships and plugins such as Buforia's object recognition, which is now pretty cutting edge and has gotten pretty advanced. Uh, so that was the one challenge in AR was physically recognizing the toy so we can take that physical and then make it digital. The second challenge was the digital. How do you make these appealing characters come, you know, be in any environment and look like they belong there? Mm -hmm. So the digital breaks down into two challenges. One is making appealing characters and making them move the way, you know, animated characters should move. So you have to imagine the skeleton inside, imagine the biology of the character, imagine how they move and give them, a, imbue that personality. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we had to do that for eight different characters. Uh, and that was really cool. We worked with, I don't know, at least five or six different animators to get, assign each a specific character and kind of make them kind of have a personality. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, working with our team at Octagon with shading and lighting, you know, different passes of, uh, should we have a bump map? Should we not have a bump map? How's it going to look at night? How is it going to look in the evening? How's it going to look in bright light? Just uh, finding, you know, the voice, finding the vision um, through experimentation. Mm. Mm -hmm. And so, and also, so what is the journey of the characters? How do they interact with the, with the physical world? And, and how do they grow with the physical world? So fungusaurs in our game, fungusaurs they are, are babies. So they're, you know, the story that we've developed is that these creatures were created in a lab somewhere. We don't know the background yet, 
but they spore. So they travel on these little spores and wherever they land, they pop up like little mushrooms and then they sprout legs and arms and then they start walking around. And now they exist and they're growing and they're looking for friends. So your job, once you found this fungus or is to have it as a virtual pet, uh, feed it, play with it. Uh, we've incorporated a fetch game so you can play fetch with your fungus ores. We're building hide and seek right now. Uh, we've also got a dance game so you can kind of control them and like uh, teach them how to dance. So it's all very kid friendly. It's all very uh, intuitive virtual pet kind of gaming. And you can also place them anywhere you want and take photos and videos and record them. And uh, yeah, flick based and touch based interactions. Amazing. And uh, how, how has your, I mean, because you've, 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 you've done a soft launch so far. So you've got your a kind of like a core fan base that have been using your characters for the last year or so. Mm -hmm. How many three thousand or so children are kind of already interacting with your your product? How has how has the response been? What have you learned through that experience? Through kind of uh, so brand building is a whole different experience, and my partner Fa is the one who's been leading the helm on that while I focus on content creation. Mm -hmm. But so far, we've sold over three thousand toys. We've got. 5,000 something fans on Instagram. Uh, we're, we're now getting on to TikTok and figuring out all these new platforms because ultimately the goal is content creation, taking that to the fans. Um, but it's really cool that now that our minimum viable product, our app is out. We're getting the toys in more retail stores. So we're in 16 different states in the US already. And the goal is to just build the brand and get the products in front of people because when they're in front of people, the, the work does the talking for you. I don't need to explain it. I don't need to, uh, you know, show anything. Like we just put it in front of kids and then they get it. They start, you know, playing with the toys just like we did with dinosaur toys back in the day. And they think these are weird. They're strange. They're kind of cute. They're kind of weird. There's something about them and they create their own stories. And we really want to you know, enable that. We want to enable kids to create their own stories with Fungusaur. So we're not telling them this is the specific kind of games you have to play. We say play with them however you want to play. And, and how do you educate children? It's like the process of educating them and inspiring them and ultimately getting them to, to play with these products. Also getting parents to feel comfortable with, because with, you're currently using physical mobile devices. How do you take people on that journey? How do you build that brand and build that this universe? I mean, if you're willing to share or open to share this process, because this is really what you're doing is really paving a way for a whole industry. Um, yeah, I mean, IP building and uh, building out, uh, you know, leveraging tech in order to do it is relatively new, um, especially in AR, VR space. And then, you know, trying to have a physical product to go with it. Um, that's kind of all very cutting edge. Really, there hasn't been anything pushing the boundaries of physical to digital stuff since Skylanders and Disney Infinity, which was five, six years ago. Um, so we want to be the next big thing like that. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's about balancing because I do have a day job. So I'm trying to, whenever I can irk out time, uh, work on the brand, uh, figure out what do people respond to? What can I create? Uh, the simplest way is to, take our toys because we have lots of toys and give them away and watch people interact with them, do unboxings, play with them. Mm -hmm. um, also take the toys in different places and take photographs of the toys in location. Same with the augmented reality app, just launch the app whenever it's a nice, beautiful day or whenever I go, I, I love camping and traveling. So mm -hmm. I like to go, I'm going to death Valley in a few weeks. I'll go to Hawaii. I'll go anywhere I want to go. I'll place the characters out in the app and I'll take photos and then I'll post them. So it kind of encourages people to do the same. And what about accompanying kind of your, the physical product with, with, in the same way as traditional products have often had an animation series or a, mm -hmm. a motion graphics novel or kind of like merchandising around. How, have you looked into building the, the extended universe in, in the physical world or looking at other digital kind of vertical, I mean, like TV, like gaming, like, where are you go because because it's the characters themselves are super appealing and, and, the, and, the, and the message is really important because that's really key because it's again it's bringing people back into ecology environmentalism i'm actually working with people who are studying mycelium mushrooms and the value mm -hmm. of mycelium for a different so i really am also in the world of 
the, the mushroom and what mushrooms can really do. So there's a huge value add in that, this process of education. Um, Absolutely. How, so, so there is lots of content that can exist around this, this, these characters that you've created, this world you've created. Exactly. Uh, the stories are kind of endless. The themes that we want to explore is finding your place in the world. And we want to explore uh, basically helping kids find where they belong. Right, that's what is the theme of Fungusaurus ultimately. Uh, but the educational aspect is, like you said, it's so valuable because uh, mushrooms and fungi, what they do in nature is so key. Uh, the mycelium of mushroom can create an internet of the trees. You know, they connect everything underground so that they, you know, uh, plants can share resources, communicate with each other. Um, it's so valuable, all these things that we don't see that's happening within our ecosystems. Which is equally beautiful with AR, but with AR is the digital overlay. So it's giving us dimensions, worlds within worlds. So the mushroom world, which really exists underneath us and is the, yep. it's the hyper connectivity of the natural world. It's, it's, the, it's mm -hmm. I don't know, the ethernet, I don't know, if it's a, of how nature is communicating, <laughs> living, interacting. Um, mm -hmm. It's happening around us, and actually, interesting enough, it, it it does predate. You know, it goes back to the beginnings of time, and so yeah. you've, you've made that parallel. And at the time that the animals, nature was much more connected with the the natural world with Gaia, and actually, mm -hmm. we're learning about it. We're seeing the interconnectedness. We're find we're seeing through the, the the veil, if you will. I mean, yeah, you see it uh, in the news all the time. I mean. Mushrooms capture carbon, right? and that's what they do primarily, right? Uh, so they store it deep into the earth. Uh, yeah. They recycle nutrients. Uh, yeah. They clean up oil spills. So there's mushrooms growing right now inside of the uh, the Fukushima Daiichi, you know, like uh, inside nuclear reactors in Chernobyl. So they're the first thing that sprouts to like kind of thing. restore environment to what you know Mother Nature wants. So it's really valuable to talk about these things and how they create the base of a, an ecosystem. Honestly, life on this planet wouldn't have existed without fungi degrading rock and turning it into dirt and soil so that plants could even take hold. Mm. So there's a lot there that we could educate kids about. And it's just a matter of building out the content finding partners that believe in our vision, backing us, you know, financially, and as well as, you know, uh, making these key connections in different places so that we can focus on building this full time. So last year, of course, we had the pandemic and that threw everything for uh, a big swing. Uh, but now we're very optimistic about 2021. Mm. And AR is the perfect platform to get your vision, to communicate this particular type of message. It's very relevant because of what it yeah. enables. Uh, I guess your audience to ultimately do. So what, if I was to finish up, what, what is it that you're ultimately looking for at this stage in, in terms of moving this forward and how? So like I said, we're at the stage of our company where we're seeking seed funding. We're pretty optimistic that that'll happen in 2021. Then we can actually not do just a soft launch, but we can double down on our marketing and actually do a hard launch with an Android version of our game, launched a completed version of our iOS game. And from there, we can focus on content creation and building out the universe and stories and educational content. So uh, right now, it's all about finding key partners who share the vision, who also want AR and toys to be taken to the next level and uh, just staying in touch until we can make things happen. Nice. Nice. Thank you so much for, um, I think uh, I'll end the conversation on uh, the recorded conversation. So thanks. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. Um, and that, and I don't want.